Hello everyone, today we have some 1400 scale 3D prints of exploration vehicles, whether they be air, land, or sea. So this is a, one of my very few air-based vehicles. This actually didn't fly very high. This is called an Avrocar VZ-9 flying saucer. So it's a US experimental aircraft where they're trying to make a flying saucer. I don't think it really actually flew very far or high. I think this is from the 50s, if I had to guess, maybe the 60s, but you can look, look up pictures of it. Those little bumps on the top are actually the cockpits. So, yeah, interesting UFOs. Oh, you know what, actually, I'm going to just move this whole coast. No, never mind, I'll leave this for now. I'll put that back there so we can see them all later. So now the Russians are all about snow, snow vehicles. So this thing, I believe, is called an Avotoro Shaman. So it's an 8x8, and I believe it's Russian, but correct me if I'm wrong. It's got these giant balloon tires, and then it's quite large, right? So you can bring a lot of friends along if you're, you know, really rich. This is a blue Range Rover, classic Range Rover there, and a U.S. penny for scale reference. Okay, another... Snow vehicle of Russian orientation is a Petrovich, and this is the model 354. It's a 6x6, six six, again with the big balloon tires, rack for luggage, and bringing a lot of people through the tundra. Alright, a lot smaller, more of a personal, well not personal, but maybe two, maybe, I don't know how many people can fit inside of this. Let's call it a Sherp, S-H-E-R-P. And look at the <laughs> size of the tires on this guy. This thing can actually float. So I think it originally meant for snow travel, but it can actually float across and swim across things as well. So it's quite interesting. There's a lot of YouTube videos on this thing. So that's why I decided to make it. All right. Russian again. There's a company called Zil, Z-I-L. And this is a E167 snow truck. So, pretty wide, big giant balloon tires, and yeah, used to explore the snowy regions of Russia. This is an old, <laughs> old vehicle though, I think. It's uh, a classic vehicle. Okay, we got three more Zills. Now this one's quite interesting. This is called the 2906 Screwdrive Snowmobile. So instead of tracks or tires, it literally has two screws that spin. And then the ridges on those screws are what drive it. Maybe if I flip it over, it'd be a little bit easier to see. So when those things spin, you know, the grooves are digging into the snow. And it literally screws itself along the snow. It sounds like a weird joke, but that's actually what happens. And the reason why this was made is to scout out the Soyuz space capsule. So, interesting little history there. So that is a Zill. And so, to actually recover the Soyuz space capsule, they have something called the 4906 model, and that is a Soyuz space capsule. In case you aren't aware, that's the Russian space program. All right, so they'd find it, and then they'd put the thing on this thing and bring it back wherever it needs to be refurbished. You know what, I'm going to just leave all these up here for now, because there's one more, it's this guy. This is the Zill 49061 van, and so this is the van to transport all the support people to make all this stuff happen, all right, to uh, help move the thing. So yeah, those three vehicles were used for the Soyuz space program to recover the, uh, the module that lands back to Earth. So I thought that was interesting. I never really knew about that. So let's put those somewhere here. All right, I gotta switch uh, bases here because we have some submarine action. So James Cameron, uh, great director obviously. Terminator movie, Aliens, the second Aliens, the one with all the action. Yeah, Avatar, right, the dude. He's, he's one of my favorite directors. He's probably one of your favorite directors if you like Jack action movies. So this is the DCV-1 Deep Sea Challenger that he funded. Because the man's crazy. He wanted to go to the bottom of the oceans. And this is what he used to get there. 
So this is the orientation it would uh, sink down to. You know, it's not a horizontal vehicle, it's a vertical vehicle. All right, I'm gonna have to pause, I think. So this one here is a US one, it's called the DSV-2 Elvin. Deep sea vehicle, deep submersible, submersible vehicle? I don't know what DSV man really means. But Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, I believe, is the branch of the government that uh, does the DSV uh, dives. There have been many generations of the Alvin. I'm assuming this is the second one, being called the Dash 2, but I might be wrong. Sorry if it keeps going out of focus. It's not actually centered on the CD because there's no material in the middle of a CD. Okay, let me pause again. This here is one of the early submersibles called the Trieste. It's called a Trieste Bath Escape. So it wasn't even called a DSV back then. Uh, I have a feeling this might be from the 50s or even before because most of the photos are in black and white. Oh, sorry. The uh, light's so... The camera's just can't keep track of it because it's... Uh... You know what? Hold on. If I actually pivot it towards the middle, then it should rotate properly. Yeah, so it's quite a big one. On the bottom, that round silver thing, that's the porthole where the person actually looks out. I'm not sure what they discovered or what they learned from this vehicle. But uh, it seems like it's part of submarining history, so I thought I'd make a model of it. It's quite large. I'm looking at that Range Rover. Okay, uh, yeah, I think that's it for that one. I guess I'll just leave it up there for now. This last one is a sci-fi vehicle. And that is uh, from the Thunderbirds classic TV puppet show. And uh, that's Thunderbird 4, which is used to rescue people with a submarine. And I think that's like a shovel or a light bar on the front. I can't remember. So it's just a sci-fi thing. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, let me see if I can rearrange these in a, maybe all on this coaster. All right, so that's it for today's exploration vehicles. I don't know if I have many more back in Asia. We'll have to see. All right, well, thank you for watching today. Take care.